Today's lecture is about cultural gatekeepers. Beginning with a short recap of our previous lesson, Wendy Griswold's cultural diamond fired away to see how cultural objects, their creators and receivers, and the social worlds in which these objects are produced and consumed are all connected. It showed how the same element in the cultural diamond, for instance the receiver, not only receives experiences or consumes the cultural object, but may also be influenced by what is going on in the broader social world, in addition to any interactions they may have with the original creator or creators of the cultural object itself. The cultural diamond also enables us to realize that the relationship between creator and receiver may not always be direct. Instead, it often occurs through the object created by the creator. In our current age of mass production, most of us, especially if we purchase our cultural objects online, never meet or know about the creator of our purchased objects. All we can tell about the creator is what creative energies they have imbued into their object. Our relationship with the creator is, in this case, indirect, filtered through the ways in which we receive the cultural object itself. However, another way in which the link between creator and receiver is filtered is through the active conscious actions of cultural gatekeepers. A literal gatekeeper is someone who guards the gate and controls who or what is allowed to pass through it. When we refer to cultural gatekeepers, we often mean people or institutions that control information about or access to cultural objects and their creators. In this way, cultural gatekeepers act as intermediaries or brokers because they mediate the relationship between creators and receivers. There are at least three roles that a gatekeeper might play as co-producer, selector, or tastemaker. First, gatekeepers might be co-producers who play a role in influencing the type of content that goes into a cultural object. Gatekeepers might also operate as selectors who influence labor or product access. Finally, gatekeepers might act as tastemakers who evaluate cultural objects and or promote some, but not others, to receivers. In their capacity as co-producers or co-creators, the cultural gatekeeper may essentially sit on or with the creator, influencing the relationship between the creator and receiver through limiting the content of the cultural object that creators create. In this way, the content of the cultural object that the receiver experiences has already been shaped and constrained in ways that involve more than just the creator themselves. For instance, film producers who hold the purse strings to a film's creation may force a film director to change, add, or remove things in the film that they dislike. Film company representatives might also sit in on interviews with directors or actors, ensuring that they do not say anything that might paint the company in a bad light or give away spoilers to an upcoming film. Alternatively, the cultural gatekeeper may function as a selector, either of creators themselves or the things they create. Even if these gatekeepers are not co-producers, they mediate between creator and cultural object by limiting access to the process of creative work entering the public sphere as cultural objects. For instance, although there is a seemingly endless supply of people who wish to create music, as singing competition shows and YouTube channels have demonstrated, far fewer get picked up by large music labels willing to publish and market their music. Many singers with aspirations of creating music for a public audience therefore never really reach the stage of having their music become cultural objects for public consumption. In other cases, the creations are already made. Many painters already have portfolios of their artwork ready to go, but if venues like art galleries are unwilling to feature their work, their art may likewise remain purely private creations, never really attaining the shared significance characteristic of cultural objects. Finally, as tastemakers, cultural gatekeepers usually sit between the cultural objects and receivers, evaluating these cultural objects on behalf of audiences or potential audiences. Occasionally, these gatekeepers might also function as tastemakers for a creator's entire body of work, and may, in this capacity, be situated between creators and receivers as they evaluate creators and their creations as a whole. Gatekeepers here limit or shape the type of exposure that receivers get about creators and cultural objects. Professional critics are the clearest examples of such tastemakers, signaling to receivers which objects are quote-unquote good and which are not. For instance, film critics working for major news outlets may review individual films or even create a top 10 list of films for the year. Food critics may rate new or upcoming restaurants and their chefs. Receivers who pay attention to the work of these critics are therefore quote-unquote educated in a sense about what creators and their objects are of better quality and why.
In this video, we used the language of Wendy Griswold's cultural diamond to think about cultural gatekeepers. In this context, cultural gatekeepers are intermediaries, operating between receivers and creators to filter what creators create and shape what receivers eventually receive. Gatekeepers have one of at least three main roles. First, they may operate as co-producers, influencing what creators create and how. Second, they take the role of selectors determining which creators or their creations they will support and sponsor to ultimately create the cultural objects that will be made available for receivers. Finally, gatekeepers may be tastemakers, shaping the tastes of receivers by articulating which cultural products they consider to be worthwhile.